I want to ask you a little bit about your workshops because you do a lot of traveling and you do a lot of teaching with Ableton Reactor and Machine. Could you give us a bit of an insight into what those workshops are like? Uh, pretty much uh, some Reactor workshops and some machine workshops. I was teaching at UPhil in Detroit and I uh, was teaching Reactor, but Machine came along and killed my Reactor class and all the students wanted to make beats. It was machine from there on and um, had a lot of coverage from UPhil, where um, had a lot of support from Native Instruments from UPhil. They sponsored the class and Resident Advisor created this movie and Vice created this movie and then the, the demand from the world was wanted to support this and people started asking me, can you come to our country and do a workshop? Can you come here? Can you come here? And, it was just this demand was created from like the buzz. I have to thank Resident Advisor for that movie. Really did move things along globally. And why what, what is it that got you into Reactor originally? Because it, maybe it isn't the most traditional since when you're talking about uh, well, well, I don't gravitate towards easy programs. I don't, you know, what everyone is using. And um, I had a lot of questions about synthesis. And when I first saw Reactor and I grasped what, what it was all about, the fact that you can build your own instruments, I thought that nothing could teach me more about synthesis than, than that. And it was uh, really, uh, you know, head dived into it, really helped me l understand hardware. It became like this reciprocal relationship, what I understood in software, then I translated that in synthesis terms and on hardware and how I understood how hardware, I uh, translated that into um, software terms. So it's just been a win-win situation. And uh, since then, um, I've learned so much about music production and understanding what's going on under the hood of, an, of a device. And why is, it, why is it so important to you to pass on that knowledge? To, to newer generations? That came about, um, it, it all stemmed from a desire to learn more myself. And uh, it just kind of reinforces my learning curve because uh, I'm still learning myself. You know, I made a lot of mistakes in the past and uh, <laughs> I was stuck for like a 10 year like um, curse in, in terms of hardware and some things. and. I um, was really stuck until somebody like sit, sat me down and showed me what that stumbling block was. Because the one thing that nobody wants to be is stuck. You don't want to be stuck in traffic. You don't want to be stuck in line in a club. You don't want to be stuck in line in the uh, gas station, the bank. And you know, definitely don't want to be stuck in a relationship. So like, <laughs> and, and so for me, they're like, you know, First and primarily is, you know, I get, I, I reinforce my learning from these workshops. So like guys in the workshop will come up and show me something. Uh, like in the kids and you feel like they'll show me something or they'll force me to learn something. Like the kids like, will, like they, they ask me all the time, like how did like Swiss Beats chop the sample or how, how do you get that effect on that snare? And like, you have to tell them how it, they did it and equate it into um, the program you're using or in, in, in machine terms or reactor terms or Ableton terms. And that's challenging. So I, I like to challenge. I like to put myself under pressure. Mm. Yeah, and, and I'm gonna call you out on something here, Mike. You've been quoted as saying that 90%, that's quite a lot of people who are using machine are using it wrong. Ah, you, so, you saw how I said that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, absolutely. So how, how are we using it wrong? Because I'm probably one of those people. I, I can back that up 100%. Uh, I show that in my workshops. Uh, well, because uh, a lot of people are using machine as like this uh, single dedicated instance of producing a track. Like you pull up machine and you're working on this track. It's It's a idea tool for generating ideas. I mean, that's the way I, I see it fit. Uh, from all the workshops I've been doing, you, you, a lot of the feedback starts to come together and 
you know, whether you're doing a, a workshop in the University of Israel or uh, Malta or Singapore, like users have like a common understanding of what an instrument can do. And usually um, you can see that they have a limited perspective per se yeah. of um, what can actually be done. So shall we take a look at uh, the way you work with machines? Yeah. So I'll just pull up, um, actually I'll play a few tracks, the Jazz and Nova remixes, and uh, I have that project and I can walk you through like, um, all in machine. Like 90% machine. Percussion, piano, everything. And the thing about it is that, like, I wasn't, I'm not trying to, like, use machine to make this track and say, like, hey, I'm making a statement. It was just that I could do it. Like, that's the thing. I wasn't trying to make a statement. It was just, like, everything that I wanted to do in this track happened to be available in machine. So my workflow, when I say, like, a lot of people are using like machine wrong. Well, I was forcing all the kids to make a beat in one minute. And this kid actually did a beat in one minute. One of a uh, native software um, developers by Twisted Tools, they picked it up and included in some sound design. This kid was like 11 years old. And here he is making beats in machine. And I was forcing him to make a beat for like every minute. Me. He just, he didn't even know machine, he just picked it up and like just came in the class and just started using it. He said he had, he was 11 and said he had been doing production for, since he was five. And so like, uh, so that's what's going on in Detroit. So like, and so I said like, well, I better turn that into like my own workflow. So I can do this all from the controller. If I hit the controller and then I browse to my projects uh, and just scroll down uh, right here. I did this on July 19th for what year? Uh, probably 2010 or 11 and voila. So here um, I've arranged in every scene that you see here a different beat. Uh, here is where people would arrange, try to arrange a song, which you absolutely can do. But I use machine as a IG generating tool uh, because the artist dilemma is, well, you, you work on a track and um, you, you couldn't come up with anything today. Nothing just came out. How uh, many people are like have this artist dilemma where like you're working on something and you couldn't come up with anything today. Well, the day later, same dilemma. Well, here, every, every beat, every scene is like a beat, different beat that I made in a minute. I just keep making beats as fast as I can. I don't care if I like it or not. Because people always say, well, you know, and I get, people always say, well, I want to be a machine master. Well, if you want to be a machine master, learn the navigation on machine. Everything else comes. Just learn, learn how to navigate quickly on machine. Conquer that, and you got a uh, machine beat. And so that's why I try to make a beat per minute. Just keep it, don't worry about if I like it or not. And I can always come back to what I produce. And you will see something. You will see something. And one day, there it is, that Jazz and Nova remix. All in from doing scenes and, and one, uh, beats in one minute. And that was, uh, and so like the guys that like um, said, 
I was talking to Jazz and Over, and they said we wanted to, you know, talk to you about a remix. And so they gave me the parts that they had. And I just went around and stuck it, stuck it up under in all of those scenes. Which, and then, like, that one worked. And then so I just took those parts and then shaped it into and molded it into the remix that you heard. There it is right there. So I, always, I say in a lot of workshops, uh, this is how you collect, get royalties from your beats because you're... When you make a beat, you can always come back to it. So I try to make the strongest drum tracks I can make. Like when I go home, I'll just do a session where like, uh, first of all, what I do is I load up 16 kicks and group A, because you never, I never know what kick I want to start with. And then B, some like percussion samples. Hi hat. Uh, sounds. We go on. Move on to sound. More percussive elements. Samples. So like when I put that in the pad mode. So you can easily come up with a melody right there. I mean, so like, it's just tons of like melodies, you know, you could like, you know, create just off of this grid right here. And so then we move on to, uh, the H group uh, is just all instruments. Rows, pianos. So in pad mode, can, you know, play something. Now, that's kind of like how I was working. But that has all changed since the machine 2.0 came out because, as you can see here, I only had eight groups. While in machine 2.0 and beyond, I can have uh, unlimited groups, unlimited scenes, unlimited effects. And so when we go to like the actual Jazz and Nova project, okay, so here we are in the kind of like the Jazz and Nova project. So scene one. And I can easily like go over on top of that. So like if I um and then you know the, the chord functions. There's a Rhodes and reactor. And turn on the met, met metronome if I want. say like um, I would actually go back and look at the chords that like got printed and try to play those on the keyboard and then uh, reinforce my connection with the hardware and myself because I don't want the program actually thinking beyond me and uh, just providing me with something I don't understand I mean, what I'm doing. So machine will show you those notes. Yeah, the machine will show you those notes and you can uh, export those notes and you can bring them into your DAW. So again, like, 
you know, you because you, you want to use machine where it's speeding you up. You don't want to use it where, like, it's the same old thing, like having you uh, staying connected to the artistic dilemma where you're not getting any much. Well, yeah, machine is a great product, but I'm still stuck in the artistic dilemma. You don't want to use machine that way. You want machine to break that open, wide open. And if you use it as an idea generating tool where you have, are creating multiple beats and uh, you're generating ideas faster, you will break through that because everyone, you know, again, I talked about being stuck. Nobody wants to be stuck, but it gets deeper. So, uh, you know, having complete just kind of like changed the game. And uh, Polyplex is actually another instrument that just came out in the last couple of months. And it's a drum machine. So, you know, you use it in machines. So a drum machine inside of a drum machine. So I was telling people like that and they were like, huh, well, how does that work? Why would you want to use that? So here we are with Polyplex, stunning uh, graphical user display. So eight drums, eight, eight different samplers here. And each sampler can host four different samples. And you can randomize most of uh, its um, parameters here by like just ran <laughs> It's changing all the time as I randomize. But, so you can randomize the parameters and you can store those different snapshots that you randomize into uh, these uh, slots here. So you basically, so then you have eight samplers with four different uh, sounds in each one, and one snapshot can hold eight different variations. <laughs> so when I go to my, the scenes I've created in Polyplex, and I want to mute my B group for right now. Uh, so I go to scene one. Testing out some of the chords. And then these are all chords I made from the reactor uh, chord um, engine. So um, I'll go into pad mode and uh, click that. Different chords. So somewhere that's going to be a beat. And then I can go from different scenes up under that. Gen generate new things to work with. That was pattern one, two. You do the work ahead of time and like you, you can just surprise yourself with like an idea or a track that you definitely would never had ever came up with. And that's the beauty of it. You, you know, you don't have to know necessarily what you're doing and what you're going to do, uh, you can just know that it's there in your pool of uh, ideas that you keep generating. And so like I'll just make patterns, I'll just test this instrument, try to like really exhaust its functionality. I guess seeing the 
a lot of the time, we were talking about writer's block yesterday and creative block. And, right. Yeah, and this is a See, a why, see how you use a machine wrong? Because <laughs> <laughs> if you're just sitting there trying to work on one track. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, just to wrap up, I think the kind of concept of seeing the track as a whole and trying to do all in one go. Yeah, can, I mean, is, just doing that all the time and never, like, having these creative sessions, like, it'll be, like, a uphill battle all the time you're using machines.